In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Holy. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foil of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise your Give you a thing. 
things, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are failing and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. It is a great joy for me to be here with you once again. As most of you or all of you know, uh, I spent the last two months serving, um, well, for the most part, uh, patients dying from COVID, uh, offering them the sacraments, administering to them 
um, last, what is sometimes called last rites, confession and holy anointing. It was a great honor for me to do that, but it was a great privilege for me and uh, a great comfort to know that all of your prayers were there sustaining me. For the work that is done by the priest, especially in those moments, is not a work of corpor- is not a corporal work of mercy, but indeed a spiritual work of mercy. As we know, the church has many, and indeed this is, of course, first and foremost among all of the works that all Christians do. We seek first the spirit, and the bodily needs come second. Our Lord tells us this in many and varied ways. And so it was a great privilege and a great honor and a great comfort to know that I had your prayers sustaining me in this spiritual ministry. And in this way, we ministered together to those men and women at those moments. St. Paul reminds us of this in the letter to the Romans where he says to us that we are not in the flesh. On the contrary, we are in the spirit. This word spirit is a very important word. Sometimes we use the word soul, but in real technical spiritual or or rather technical theological language, there is an important distinction between spirits and souls. Angels are not usually, if ever, referred to as souls but they are often called spirits. We too have a spirit. There is an angelic part of our nature, something we share with the angels themselves. And yet there is also a corporeal part of our nature, something we share with the animals and even the plants and the microorganisms. Man is placed at the intersection of the spiritual and the bodily but there is a certain hierarchy within that order. We know that angels are higher than us, and yet on the order of grace, we can rise above them, for we know that Our Lady, who shares in our human nature, is queen of the angels. And so by God's goodness, we can rise higher than our human nature, or our our corporeal nature, rather. We can only do this if we order our lives correctly. St. Paul tells us how this is to be properly ordered in this reading. He tells us if we live by the flesh, we will certainly die by the flesh. But if we live by the spirit and put to death the deeds of the body, we will certainly live. In other words, we might say that it's more important to put the supernatural Above the, natu- or above the natural. The, some of you may be familiar with the monastic order of St. Benedict. They have a wonderful and beautiful model or motto uh, by which they say, ora et labora, pray and work. One of the things that St. Benedict, the founder, of course, of the Benedictines, knew was that although man is ordered to pray, and as St. Paul reminds us elsewhere in the scriptures, to pray always, his body becomes tired. We become fatigued, and there's only only so many hours that we can pray. And so Benedict, in his wisdom, ordered the life of these monks to be both prayer and work, and through that work, find refreshment. Those of us who exercise on a regular basis know that we're often more filled with energy after we exercise than even before. A certain good and true recreation leads us to be able to enjoy the spiritual things much more freely and much more deeply. And so there is a certain ordering to the flesh, to the spirit. We are to look at the natural things and say, how can we use these natural things for great and true benefit, for spiritual, spiritual, supernatural benefit? And in this way, we store up treasures in heaven. But we also look to see what happens when we fail to order things correctly. When we do this, we find that our lives begin to run out of control. Now, not necessarily in a terrible and disordered way, but in a way that if we're honest with ourselves, we find that we lack peace. We find that we lack rest. For we are often seeking things of this world and not of the next. St. Augustine has that beautiful and oft 
quoted phrase, my heart is restless, O Lord, until it rests in you. When we begin to put our treasures in earthly things, we find that we are often overwhelmed by distractions. We allow sports, entertainment, friends, family, even good things to distract us from the most important things. Our Lord reminds us, though, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And when we find ourselves running distracted with these things of the earth, we do well to remind ourselves of the words our Lord said to St. Mary, that she has chosen the better part when she knelt at the feet of our Lord and simply took in his quiet presence, his humble words. Martha, on the other hand, stands in contrast as a woman who, is cared, who cares so much about these earthly things, she is tempted at times to lose uh, sight of the supernatural. And so if we find ourselves like Martha, running, 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 and at the end of the night, find our minds and our thoughts still running, we might ask ourselves, have I been too much Martha and not enough Mary today? Have I lived too much according to the flesh and not according to the spirit? Have I ordered my life in such a way that all the things I use of this world are ordered to the greater benefit of the world to come? I've spoken to you in the past about a beautiful commencement speech given by David Foster Wallace, which was later published as an essay known as This is Water. There he talks about how we are inclined and tempted to worship many of the things of this world, but that when we do, we find ourselves always lacking, whether it's pleasure, treasure, beauty, or some other thing such as success. All of those things will lead us lacking. This is simply another way of saying that our hearts can rest only until they rest in the Lord himself. Believe it or not, there are many good things that have come and I believe will come from this time of pandemic, this time of quarantine. We are given in many ways more opportunities for quiet and silence and contemplation. Many of you have begun to work from home in that hour or more even spent commuting in the car. Perhaps you've given to work and there is something laudable about that. But perhaps you could take some of that time and set it aside for the Lord. And there you might sit in silence as St. Mary knelt in silence by our Lord. There are many ways in which you can do this, but they're all ultimately ordered to raise up our spirit, to raise our hearts to the Lord. You might do this by spending a few moments in scripture and then meditating upon what those scriptures mean. You might simply pray and sit in a corner of your room with the words uh, of the Eastern tradition, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, that beautiful Jesus prayer. You might pray uh, in the Western tradition, a most beautiful rosary given to us by Our Lady through St. Dominic. All of these, however, are ultimately ordered to that colloquy of the heart those quiet moments in which we speak to the Lord our deepest thoughts, our deepest sentiments, where we say to him, Lord, this is what's going on in my life. Enter in here. Lord, this is where my anxiety is found. Calm my heart. Grant me peace. For I know that I can only find peace in you. And that when I allow my heart to be distracted, I put on the heavy yoke and the burdens of the world. And in those quiet moments, we might say to our Lord Jesus, give me your yoke, for it is easy. Give me, give me your burden, for it is light. Let us now stand and confess our faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, incarnate of the Virgin Mary, he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is seated in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask him to prompt us in, his, in our prayers that they may be worthy of his hearing. For Pope Francis, Cardinal Sean, our bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. For the elderly who suffer from isolation or sickness, that they may be strengthened by our love of them as brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves gathered here, that as God does not cease to sustain us with the things of this life, we may know how to use them in such a way that we may hold even now to the things that endure forever in the next. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray also for Joan Foster, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all our beloved dead. We pray to the Lord. May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 383, The Summons. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is Stand By Me. We pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. All religious education home programs are due at the rectory this week. Uh, and if you have a child entering first grade, please call the rectory to register uh, him or her for religious ed. And if you haven't already done so, I think most of you probably have at this point, uh, signed up for flock notes, please do. You can find the, the sign up on our webpage, St. Mary's Foxboro. Um, and there you'll receive uh, weekly links to our registration for mass, uh, but also any other news that we have. And lastly, we have a new Bible walk installed outside. Uh, you can take your family to read about David and Goliath, and you just start at the statue of the Holy Family. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful 
for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed His grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O beautiful for pilgrim feet, whose stern impassioned stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the Success be known.